right. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Ask Ferris Show. And I am so excited. I'm so excited for today's guest. As you know, we bring the latest uh, and greatest entrepreneurs. But one thing we want to go through and actually bring a different twist of entrepreneurship. And I think everyone actually sees entrepreneurship in the for-profit organization, in which, though, that's important. I want to bring on today's guest, Shantira Chapman, who's the executive director and founder of the, Ch of the Chapman's Women's Foundation. And she's going to bring on and actually tell us a little bit about the Chapman's Women's Foundation, her story, and how she got started. So first of all, I want to like say welcome, Shantira. Hi, thank you for having me. You are more than welcome. We're excited about this conversation that we're having on today because, again, after doing some little research on you, and I'm just so excited that our paths cross, and I'm so excited that you're going to give a, a different twist because we understand the, the importance of having for-profit organizations, but as an entrepreneur, I, I don't want anyone to realize, I don't want anyone to go through and recognize that you can be an entrepreneur and still run a successful nonprofit organization. And that's why I wanted, to, I wanted you to come on and actually just tell, about, tell us about your organization a little bit, how you got started, and we're just going to have a conversation from there. Sure. Sounds great. Got it. Got to go. So, Sincera, kind of tell us, like, have you always been an entrepreneur? We're going to go through and break down the entrepreneur part. Have you always been an entrepreneur? Because I think some people say, well, entrepreneurs are born and I necessarily don't believe that. I believe that sometimes situations happen or changes happen or we come to a crossroad where the entrepreneurial gene or entrepreneur, you say that, you know what, this is a situation. This is a problem that I need to solve. And you just kind of stumble upon that, hey, this is a business as well. So, um, so have you always been an entrepreneur? No, I have not. I actually didn't have plans on doing anything entrepreneurial. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I did the school, the college thing, joined a, a consulting firm, was working. Um, my background is in IT, so I worked at the Johnson Space Center here in Houston. And I was working there, and you said uh, something right, right when you were asking the question, finding a need or seeing a need and deciding that I wanted to do something. Yeah. And so I founded the Chapman Women's Foundation nine years ago wow. after volunteering at a women's shelter. Mm. And so I was working with my company, mm -hmm. you know, doing all of the community relations things and where can we write a check to? Shantara, exactly. can you go find us an organization that we can support? Exactly. And I found this local shelter. Mm -hmm. So we would support them. We would support them by um, by bringing them Christmas gifts and holidays, going up there and doing things, and of course, writing the big checks. Yes. Sir. And one day, I just decided to call them and say, hey, do you need anything else besides my company's check? Wow. Wow. <laughs> and they said yes, and they said, hey, we need someone to come and help the ladies with assertiveness and help them get jobs. So I would go and volunteer. Wow. So this whole thing started for me because the ladies at the shelter asked me if I could do something on the weekend. Because and, and, and I want to stop right there because so what have have you always had a servant a, a servant's uh, heart? Have you always has that always been uh, within you or because what because sometimes people when they look at volunteer they it's like oh well my 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 job said I have to volunteer mm -hmm. this weekend but you took it a step beyond you went that extra mile when it came to actually give in service. So have you always had that with, from within? You know, um, you know, when I ask my family and all of them, they'll say, Shantara, you's all, you've always wanted to run the ship. You've always wanted to be my mama. Uh -huh. but, <laughs> but for some reason, I just called them. It was just like, they, they just stayed on my mind. I don't know what was happening. I think, you know, a mindset, there was a shift. Wow. Somehow there was a shift where I felt like I could do more mm -hmm. or I could do it better, you know, that kind of thing. So when they asked me to do something on the weekend, it took me about a year to really get my mind around, do I exactly. really want to do this? Exactly. And it started out very small as a conference. Mm -hmm. I did a women's conference, invited some ladies from the shelter, invited some of my mentors, wow. and just kind of found a nice spot to do it. And then poof, you know, right? Wow. It went from having 20 ladies the first year to uh, close to 300. Wow. <laughs> Wow. And it was like, it just kind of grew organically. And I said, wait a minute, this is now something different. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just do this women's conference thing. Exactly. I want to make it a real nonprofit. To me, exactly. a real foundation where I'm giving back and I'm able to give scholarships. So now I'm able to give scholarships. I have mentoring programs, workforce development programs. I have a magazine that's launching next week. Yes. So there's all of these things that we're able to do where we're highlighting different women, mm. whether it's in, in the city or outside the city, mm -hmm. we're still able to, you know, constantly give, but in a different way. And, and, and that's one thing I really want my listeners to understand that 
because I, I like how you service the Houston area, Houston, Texas uh, area. And so you really know this is your community. This is your yeah. niche. And, and so you, you broke it down from the area to the niches you're serving, serving women. And mm -hmm. I really believe that as entrepreneurs, we have to know who we're going to go through and serve, no exactly. matter on which side of the spectrum. But that's the only way we're going to serve at that great level, at that high level that we desire to go through and serve. And I think that's one thing that I really, when you were talking, I really saw your passion come from it. And then I, I looked at one of the videos and you have, you all are actually doing a tremendous service and actually have a tremendous impact on the community because I actually uh, saw one young lady in one of the videos, she's actually in law school or, or was finishing up law yeah. school and you are able to go through and be there for her during that time. And that's so important. And so now she's the foundation's lawyer. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, wow. when I have issues, I call her and she's the one that writes all of our contracts. She wow. does everything. Look, look at the impact that you all have had on, on just lives. And again, over 300 plus lives. And those lives are touching other lives and those mm -hmm. other lives are touching other lives. So right. if, if you did not jump, if you did not leap, if you did not kind of listen to that innermost being and you to say, you know what, hey, let me volunteer. It started off with a volunteer mm -hmm. on a weekend, and no one wants to give up their weekends. Nobody. It started <laughs> off with a volunteer on the weekend, but look at the impact that it has had. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's just amazing, and that's one thing I really want my listeners to realize that, hey, it, it, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take all the finances in the world. It just takes a willing effort. It takes just a willing mind to say, you know what, this is exactly what I want to do. And so with, with that push for, I want you to go through and kind of highlight a little bit more about the Chapman, uh, the Chapman's Women Foundation. So what are some of the key things? So what are some things that you all really dive deep into to go through and service the women in your community? So really dive deep. We have three things that we really are known for. One is the scholarships. So we give to women who are building businesses or, you know, their goal, their life goal was to build a business. Yeah. Um, young ladies that are going back to school. So like you saw in the video, and then to get back to the way everything started, ladies who are getting out of shelters. Mm -hmm. So uh, we work with local shelters to find those ladies who are ready to re-enter and maybe have a problem with getting um, the deposit for an apartment or down payment on a car, you know, those kind of things. So we kind of help provide those leg up, so to, yeah. so to speak. And, so, and, I, and, and I want to pause right there. So let's walk it down. So why is it so important for women to step out in business? And, I, and probably if you've followed me for a while, if anybody's followed me for a while, everyone knows that my whole idea, women, are, women entrepreneurs are really taking over now because yeah. they are not sitting on the sideline and actually waiting for opportunities to come. They're, they're taking what they learned in school. They're taking what they learned in the past. They're taking the experience today and saying, you know what? I can go through and meet a need based on what I've been through. So why is it so important for women, especially young women, to go through and actually have that awaken the entrepreneurial gene, regardless of nonprofit or private? Why is it so important? I think because one, everybody, the, the way things are going right now with technology and social media, everybody is kind of paving their own way. There's a new way. It's not a go to college to be successful mm -hmm. type of thing anymore. And so now you see younger, um, young, young men and young women yeah. who are trying to figure out what's the next step. Mm -hmm. And the more you look up and see women, now you have these young girls who are going, okay, I can do this. I can do this better. Mm -hmm. I remember being at on stage one year at my conference, and I've been told you need to be out front a little bit more because typically I'll showcase women and I don't have to be seen. You know, exactly. beginning and the end for the most part for me. Well, I was at on stage, and once I got off stage, two young girls walked up to me. They were from University of Houston, and they said, "We had no idea you were running the show." Wow. Oh my God, wow. that changed everything because I thought for sure this was there was a man behind this. Wow or she said, or a white woman. Exactly. And they were like, there's no way I would have thought someone that looked like me did all of this. And wow. so that's really important to me. That's really important for me to be role models, to be <laughs> a role model. I tell people all the time, I know you see it on TV and reality TV is telling you, you shouldn't be a role model or you should, we need to be role models. Yes. And we need to own in our own communities. We need to be the one, we shouldn't be looking for other people to take care of us. Yes. And that's the whole premise of uh, the Chapman Women's Foundation, this whole power thing that I do. I love it. Around building women up to, hey, you're, you make the rules. It, you take it, your own steps. It, it, and that's, back in the day, we used to talk about a glass ceiling, especially no matter if you're minority, man, female, male, whatever the minority was, it, everyone always spoke about the glass ceiling. But I, one thing I look at is 2017, 
we have the ability to crush any glass ceiling mindset or concept that actually has been placed out there because we have the ability, as long as you have the capability to go through and learn, you have the capability to earn as well. So no matter if you decide to go off to college or mm -hmm. no matter if you go through and actually decide to go through a trade or no matter if you go through and actually step out on an entrepreneurial journey and say, you know what, I'm going to go through and actually create the destiny that I would like to go through and create. I think that some things like that, like I think 2017, especially living nowadays, it's so possibilities here. Possibility yeah. is here. There's no ceiling. It's no it doesn't ceiling. have to be a ceiling. Exactly. It, and and, and that, that's the thing. I think the only thing the ceilings are within the mind. And that's one mm -hmm. thing I really want my listeners to realize it's possible. And that's one reason why I created the Ask Fair Show, because just like you were saying, so many times people look at the reality television or so many mm -hmm. times people look at the glitz and the glam, but there are entrepreneurs out there just like you and I, they're out, out there running businesses, successful businesses day in and day out. We may not be on the, on the fancy list of Hollywood or whatever, <laughs> but we're, we're, that the backbone of the economy is the local business. And I want individuals to realize that there are people out there doing it. You don't have to go through and be the, I can't rap for nothing. And I Lord knows I can't sing, but, <laughs> but you, you don't have to go through and just go down one stream to go through and actually gain success. You can utilize the intellect the mm -hmm. that you have right now at your own um, fingertips to go through and actually achieve the goals and dreams that you would like. And that's one thing I really see within you. And I see that the doors that you're opening for not only people in scholarship, but helping them uh, actually achieve housing goals as well. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I know you were saying that you all assist individuals to go, to go through and acquire housing, whether it's ownership or rental. Why is it so important, especially and, and I want you to go, go through, why is it so important for, I know you all uh, work specifically with women. Why is it so, why is housing so important, especially for women? Why, why? Well, the ladies that we're working with that are getting out of shelters, mm -hmm. <laughs> they typically are, you know, single moms, of course. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, last year, I had a lady who had two little girls. Wow. Mm -hmm. And she, um, she had an apartment, but it was just like a box to her. Yeah. You know, the, the young girls didn't know, you know, they, they lived in the shelter all their lives. So when they moved into their apartment, they were grateful. Yes. But there was no furniture. They're sleeping on the floor. They're eating basically off of, you know, like little cardboard boxes mm -hmm. and things like that. And, and for me, I feel like you need to show a home. Yes. And yes. she, the mom felt like, I'm doing the best I can, but this is not a home. This is just a, a space. Mm. Can, mm. can you help me or do you have resources that can help me to create a home for my kids. Yes. And I understand that because I didn't come from, you know, uh, I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth at all by any means. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I tell people all the time is I was blessed to have a mom yes. who made sure the little things that we did have, mm -hmm. everything felt like home. Yes. yes. Every, every little thing. If we didn't live, we didn't live in the best neighborhoods, mm -hmm. but our little apartment, it was clean. It was nice. It was sit together. We had a meal on the table every day, you know, so she, I, I saw a, a mother yes. who was able to still be a mother despite the economic situation. Yes. And so yes. I want to be able to help women to not worry so much about the money, mm -hmm. at least up front so they can, you know, provide a little, you have a little extra time with their kids. So, you know, and, or, and, you know, be, be able to get dishes that they can eat on instead of cardboard boxes. And, and I think one thing I was talking to a buddy of mine earlier um, on yesterday, and we were talking about that because I really believe that exposure is mm -hmm. definitely key. And so exposure, especially at the young age, but especially if you have young children, it's, it's so important for us to go through and expose them at a young age to, to, to possibility instead of going through and saying, this is the box that you're going to be in forever. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that individuals, we have to go through and step outside our boundaries because sometimes other individuals may need that helping hand to go through and assist with that exposure. Because just like you said, like I, I was not raised with a silver spoon, but my mother gave us the exposure. We got a chance to take trips. Even though I know sometimes maybe the ends did not meet, but we're able to go through and travel. We were able to go through and actually research. We we're able to go through and go to lot. We were able to do some of the things that she, she was able to allow us to do, but the exposure was key. And those things that I lean and glean upon right now today, and those are the things that I attribute to where I am today because she did not put us in a box and say, you cannot do this. You cannot travel. You cannot do X, Y, and Z. And I think those are the things where I just see like what your organization is doing is so, it's, it's so vital. And I just want to applaud you all for the things that you all have done. But my thing is, I want to know if we're having this conversation, if we're having this conversation three years from today, 
what has to have happened within your organization that you'll look back and say, you know what, we've, we, we, we've, we've achieved, we, we've actually worked our plan for the last three years and we made it to this level right here. So where, where do you see your organization within the next three years? Three years, um, my workforce development program, like killing it. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. year is our first year doing a workforce development program where we are working with local shelters and going in once a quarter mm -hmm. to teach communication skills, uh, behavioral change, to get back in the workforce, um, money management, things of that nature to help ladies who are trying to kind of re-enter and uh, develop a sense of normalcy. And yeah. so that workforce development program, this is the first year I'm doing it. So in three years, the plan is to be connected with all of the local shelters and have a, um, a set of volunteers, so I'm not always the one out doing it, to where I have a set of volunteers that I can call on and they're scheduling them, you know, and it's kind of working like clockwork. Yes. That's what I want. I also want my mentoring program to be a little bit larger. Right now we have about eight to 10 ladies working in the mentoring program, but I would like to see it get up to about 20 yes. where it's, you know, kind of a every six months or so I'm able to rotate out class A to class B and kind yeah. of have a reunion and all of yeah. that sort of thing. Uh, but there's that accountability piece, of course, that I want to make sure is there. So I don't want to always just say I'm doing it to do it. Yes. So those two, if I can get those two off the ground because the scholarships are doing really well, Great. but if I can get that mentoring program, you know, doing some really good things and the workforce development, I'm solid. I'm really happy. Wow. wow. I'm just so, I, I, I'm elated to the things that you all are doing. And I just look at like, I'm, I, I'm, I haven't put out this lesson yet, but probably by the time this airs, probably the lesson is, will be out. But I'm actually doing some research right now. And I, I'm writing a lesson where I'm saying, hey, do not look at the spotlight, look at the shadow. And so I'm actually doing some research because everyone knows Justin Bieber. And like, oh, my gosh, Justin Bieber is the pop star, whatever he is. Um, right. But my thing is, I'm looking at the path of mentorship, just like you'll bring it up. Justin Bieber would not be the Justin he is without his mentor, Usher Raymond. Right. Usher would not have been the, the guy he is without his mentor, Quincy Jones. Right. Quincy Jones would not have been the mentor he is without his, his, his mentor, Gillespie, like the, the, the jazz musician. Yes. And my thing is, and when I go through and look at that, so instead of looking at the spotlight, I'm looking at the shadow. Who's in the shadow? If Gillespie didn't go through and actually take the time to mentor Quincy Jones at a pivotal moment where he had to be mentored, it wouldn't have been a Michael Jackson. It wouldn't have been a Usher Raymond. Look at the domino effect that mentorship has. Look at the domino effect that if he didn't go through and say, you know what, and I don't, and I haven't written back far to go through and see who his mentor was, mm -hmm. but it's a domino effect when it comes to mentorship. And I think that's why it's so important for us to continue to be the examples, especially in an entrepreneurial environment for young people and other individuals who are aspiring to be entrepreneurs so that they can see, because they may not be able to be directly mentored by you or I or someone, but just they can be mentored vicariously through some of the things that we put out, through mm -hmm. content that we put out. And that's one thing, I'm, I'm looking at the shadows of the young lawyer who, who's now your, 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 legal, your legal advisor, looking at the shadows of the things that, that you are placed in her. And I can just only imagine the mentorship that you've actually had and your, your team has had as hmm. far as your, your direct mentors. It's just a lot of things go on in the shadow and I really want my listeners to realize that it takes those shadow moments. It takes uh -huh. those direct connection with individuals who are actually out there doing it and who's willing to go through and assist as well. So I just want to put that out there. But b before we leave, like, we didn't get a chance to take our commercial break because the, um, the conversation <laughs> was so fluid. Um, but before we leave, I want you to go through and actually, what type of advice would you give to a young entrepreneur who's starting off, who, 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 who maybe just starting off, they have a passion from within, but they may not know where to go. They may be kind of lost on that path. That, you know, sometimes we get the entrepreneur where we want to do everything. But what, would, what type of advice would you give to that entrepreneur who's just starting off? Just starting off, I would say breathe. Mm. Because when I first started, it was like a whirlwind. Yes. I was trying, like you said, all of the place. I'm wanting to save the world. Okay, yes. I'm going I'm to lead all women, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and it was so much. But if you take a moment to just kind of breathe mm. and slow down, mm. um, things would fall into place and understand that baby steps are better than no steps at all. Yes. And you don't have to, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing. I, I used to tell myself either I'm going to do this hundred percent or I'm not going to be able to give it my all. Mm -hmm. So if you're not able financially to step away from a job, that's okay. Yes. Baby step it, phase this thing out yes. and make sure that the things you are doing 
-hmm. are so on brand that it's going to be easy for you to walk. When it's time for you to walk away, you got everything set up. Exactly. So just write it out, slow it down, and know that you're in charge of it. Don't worry about what your girlfriend's saying or your boyfriend's saying or what they're saying on TV. This is your path, yes. nobody else's. Just breathe. Just breathe. Those are those are powerful words because I think again, just like you said, so many times we're here, there, and everywhere, or we look at we look we so many times we'll stroll up Facebook and we'll look at people like, oh my gosh, these guys are doing X, Y, and Z. <laughs> And you don't realize that they just didn't start yesterday. They, they may have said that, okay, they have achieved this great success in the last six months, but let me see the five years before that. Yep. So, so it's a lot of work, and I don't want anyone to be naive to realize that work is not a part of the equation when it comes to success. Mm -hmm. And the only thing, just like you said, we just have to breathe. We just have to go through and breathe and really enjoy the journey, the ups mm -hmm. and the downs. And there will be ups and there will be downs, but we have to go through and stay faithful to the journey and enjoy the journey as well. So with that being said, I just want individuals to go through and connect with you as well. So how can I, my listeners go through and follow you, connect with you? Like what, how, how can they connect with you? So chapmanwomensfoundation.org. That's my website. So everything's out there uh, on Facebook, uh, the Chapman Women's Foundation as well. They can find me there. And Instagram is powerful. So those are those are the those are the key places that people tend to be able to catch up with me. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And I'm going to definitely include those into the show notes as well, because I really want people to go through and connect. I want my donors to connect as well. I know individuals out there who could go through and actually donate as well. I want those individuals to connect as well, because I think your mission is powerful. The impact that you're having on the lives of the women in the Houston area is it's, it's expanding way beyond Houston. I already know it because people just don't naturally stay in a general in a local yeah. area that's expanding as well. So the things that you're doing is just so great. And I cannot wait to go through and have you on my show again. I think you've been a blessing to the show. And I just want to say thank you so much for just being on the Ask Ferris show. Thank you for having me. I'm glad that we met when I was in Georgia and I'm glad that you invited me on the show. Most definitely, most definitely. We well, appreciate it so much. And again, I look forward to have you back on, all right? All right, thank you. Thanks.